awesome woman, considered all of the world's thy hands and made. I see the storm, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. We invite you to stand as we sing praises to our Lord. Good morning, everyone. 
Welcome to St. Matthew. It's great to have you here, whether you're members, visitors, or streaming online today. It's great to be in worship together as we continue and actually wrap up our sermon series on worship. And uh, Pastor Paul Moldenhauer will be preaching for us today on longing for worship. And I'm Pastor Michael Hansen, and I'll be leading us in worship today as well. Uh, so let's begin our service as we always do in God's name. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is good to praise the Lord and to make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Please listen to the refrain the first time and then join in each subsequent time. As morning breaks, I look to you. I look to you, O oh Lord, to be my strength this day. As morning breaks, as morning breaks, as morning breaks, I look to you. I look to Oh Lord, to be my strength this day, as morning breaks, as morning breaks. Oh God, you are my God, for you I long, for you my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you. Like a dry, weary land without water. So I gaze on you in your holy place to see your strength and your glory. As morning breaks, I look to you. I look to you, O oh Lord, to be my strength this day. than life, my lips will speak your praise, so I will bless you all my life, in your name I will lift up my hand, my soul shall be filled as with a banquet, my mouth shall praise you with joy. As morning breaks, I look to you, I look to you, O oh Lord, to be my strength this day. As morning breaks, as morning breaks, on my bed I remember you, on you I muse through the night. the shadow of your wings I rejoice my soul clings to you your right hand holds me fast as morning breaks I look to you I look to you O oh Lord to be my strength this day We pray. In Christ, the God of heaven has made his home on earth. Christ dwells among us and is one with us. Highest of all creation, he lives among the least. He journeys with the rejected and welcomes the weary. Come now, all who thirst, and drink the water of life. Come now, all who hunger, and be filled with good things. Come now, all who seek, and be warmed by the fire of love. We invite you to be seated at this time.
Beautiful. Beautiful music. And it's all to worship a God who is absolutely worthy of it. Thank you so much, Handbell Choir. Our reading for today is from Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage as they pass through the valley of Baca. They make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. The Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. This is our scripture for today. We sing. It's a good song, isn't it? It's a great message in that song. Love that song. Last week, we began a new worship schedule, and that means that we're still trying to get used to it. Have <laughs> you noticed that? We're still trying to get used to the idea of what time do I need to get up to get to this building on a Sunday morning, or readjust to worship on a Monday night, or get used to staying longer or coming earlier for Bible class, or watching on live stream in worship at a different time than what you have been used to. And as you know, whenever there's something new that you take on, it takes a while to get used to it. It's not like last week we figured it out and now we're all into the routine. 
But when you uh, get into a, rot a routine of something, a habit of something, there can be a danger there. And that's what we want to take a look at today and how we might best overcome it with God's help. We're closing out, as Pastor Michael said, not Pastor Paul, as we're closing out this uh, series of messages on worship, we're going to take a look at the Bible reading, Psalm 84. Uh, Psalms, 151 of, 150, I should say, Psalms are in the Old Testament songbook, and that's really what the the book of Psalms, that part of the Bible is all about. It's a bunch of songs. It uh, commonly is referred to as being authored by David. And he did author a good deal of those Psalms, but not all of them. The heading for this particular Psalm is that it was written by a fellow called, or someone called the Sons of Korah. The Sons of Korah. Korah was a cousin of Moses. His descendants were chosen by David, the king, to be the musicians, the song leaders and musicians. And one of the sons of Korah, we don't know which one or what his name was, was the one who penned this song that is our Bible reading here this day. Um, we don't know when he, pe he penned it. Uh, some have suggested it had happened when David was king. Others have suggested it was after Solomon had built the temple. And we don't know quite what the circumstances were when he penned this thing. It's clear, however, that he has, uh, he was apart from the temple when he wrote it. But despite all the things we don't know in terms of background of the psalm, one thing that is very clear is that he longed to be with God in worship. He longed for what you are doing today. And it's from that that we can learn how to avoid the danger of getting in the habit of worship. Habits. <laughs> Some of them are good. I, it was interesting. I've talked to several of you that were talking about getting your kids ready for the start of school. And one of the things that I heard several of you talk about was the week before school started, you started having your kids go to bed early so they could learn again how to get up early. Um, the, the operative word in that sentence is you tried to get them to do that. So, but that's a good habit to learn, to try to learn, because you don't want to be late for school all the time. That gets all messy and so on. So uh, that's a good habit, routine to be in, going to bed early so you can get up early for school. That's a good habit. But not all habits, not all routines are as helpful. Some, in fact, can be... Um, rather dangerous, actually. Did you ever drive home, let's say, from work and um, a familiar place? Maybe it wasn't work, but let's say you were driving home from work. You remember getting into the car and you remember getting out of the car. Everything in between, you have no recollection of. You were so caught up in, your mind was so wrapped up in the things that happened at work that day, and you were so much on automatic pilot you zoned out as you were driving home. You don't remember if you stopped at the stop sign. But you're home. I'm kind of thinking that's maybe not the safest way to drive. Do you think? Right? That might, that might not be the finest thing to be in such a habit that you zone out when you're driving. In a similar way, the same kind of downside of habit can occur in worship. We can be people who, and this is the downside, right? You got to get into the habit of what time do I get up now to come to church and all these other habits we got to get into. But the downside is that we get in such a routine that it becomes a rut that we do it mindlessly. We zone out. We fall into the rut of attending worship out of a habit, out of obligation, or only when convenient. Because you know, if Satan can't get you to stop being with God in worship, and don't you know, he'll come up with all kinds of excuses why you can't be here. He'll be, have all kinds of excuses why, oh, I forgot. Yep, 845, that's when the live stream starts. Uh, he'll come up with all kinds of reasons why you are prevented from being with God in worship. But if he can't do that, maybe what he can do is so get you into the rut of worship, so into the routine of worship, 
that you remember sitting down and you remember getting up, but everything else in between, well, you kind of zoned out. And he'll love that, Satan will, because you'll miss everything good that God wants to do in the in-between. So how do you avoid the rut of worship? The answer is by longing for worship, by longing for worship. I heard it again just before worship for one of you. I heard it just again. And you recall that um, from the middle of March last year till the end of June, we did not have in-person worship. You remember this, right? And uh, then we began, because of the pandemic deal, right? And then we began in July to restart in-person worship. And this attendance was real small. But people began to slowly trickle back in as they felt safe to do so and so on. So they slowly began to trickle in. And if I heard it once, I heard it a dozen times and more from you as I heard it just before worship. I heard things like this. You know, it's kind of nice sitting at home in my pajamas and the easy chair with a cup of coffee and worship. It's kind of nice. But oh my goodness, when I came back, just to be together in God's presence, there was nothing like that on Zoom. There was nothing like it on Facebook. I kind of think that the author of the song, Psalm 84, would agree. He too had that kind of heart for what happens when we gather to be with God in worship. He says it this way, my soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord, my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Notice the intense desire described as even to the point of fainting. He wanted so much to be with God and his people in worship. His soul, his heart, his flesh, his whole being yearned for it, longed to be with God in worship. In fact, the songwriter in verse 3 really sounds kind of jealous of the birds who nested close to the place of worship, unhindered to be by God, kind of jealous that they could do it all the time because for some reason he's not. The songwriter, oh my goodness, he's not in a rut of worship. He was not mindlessly going through the motions of worship. He was not zoned out, attending worship out of habit or obligation, and he certainly wasn't attending worship when it was only convenient. Elsewhere, the Bible describes this kind of longing for worship with these words, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. We're going to go meet with him. How can we avoid the not-so-good habit of worship, the rut of worship, where we do it only out of habit and obligation? where we do it only when convenient. How can we avoid that? It's by longing for worship, longing to be with God like the songwriter here. Of course, <laughs> that begs the question, what, what if I don't long for worship? How do, I, how do I get that longing? How do I get that yearning? that's so deep that every part of me just has to be here with God. How did the songwriter get it? Well, let's look. Verse one, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. I'm not so sure that's the best translation. How lovely is thy dwelling place? Because the phrase, how lovely, by this, the author is not just simply saying, nice church. 
He's not extolling the architectural design and the exquisite decorations of the tabernacle or the temple. The word lovely can better, I would suggest, be translated how beloved, how loved is your place, Lord Almighty. How love, how much I love being in your space where you are. How much I love that. He says, why does he love it? Because that place, that gathering of God's play of people is the place where God is present with his pardon and his peace and his power. He goes on to say, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. And it's interesting that the word we had in the song, the opening song, I don't know if you, did you catch that? Opening song is the same as the Bible reading virtually. And it translated this with how happy Happy for blessed. And the word blessed can be translated that way. But I think in this context, it really is talking about the happiness that comes from the blessings of God. How blessed are those who dwell in your house. They're ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. Like the sun, God reveals spiritual light and life in worship. Jesus once said, I have come that they might have light, that you might have life and have it to the full. And it is in worship where God gives life. He enables life like God designed it. Like a shield, God protects. And it happens in worship where uh, we are reminded of God's protection, as it says elsewhere in the Psalms. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Worship is a place where God is reminding us, encouraging us, lifting up with the assurance that he's protecting us. He's got our back. The Lord bestows favor and honor in worship. He graciously grants forgiveness to those who have fallen in sin. Yes, all of us. But he gives us then the honor of being his forgiven, beloved children. That's the blessing that we we have, we receive when we gather in worship. We come to worship as imperfect people who have failed to live godly lives. Any of you in that one? We come as people who have been broken by the battles of life. Anybody feeling that way today? We come as people who are hurting from the hassles of the week. Is that one you? And by his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus shows up in worship and he grants us an opening of the storehouse of God's blessing, the treasures of God's blessing, divine favor, forgiveness for our failures, the honor of being God's killed uh, children, the sunlight of God's word that would guide our lives, the shield of God's protection, protection in the midst of the battles and the hassles of the week. This is what God offers and gives when we gather for worship. No wonder the songwriter says, better is just one day in your presence, Lord, than a thousand elsewhere. If I only have one day, I'd rather be here than anywhere else. Because here you are. And you are the one that fills my soul. And there's nobody else who can do that. The best part of worship is not being in a beautiful building or experiencing a religious ritual. The best part of worship is not being together with friends, though in and of itself, that's really good. The fellowship of God's people, that's really good. But the best part of worship is a God who shows up and says, I've got something for you this morning. In fact, every time you come, I've got something for you in this worship. Our Lutheran confessions put it this way. This is how God wants to be known and worshiped, that we accept his blessings and receive them because of his mercy. God wants us to believe him and to accept blessings from him. This he declares to be true worship. So, Look for it. When you get in the car to come here, long for it. When you sit here, when you watch here, seek what God has for you in worship because he's coming every time. 
something for you. It might be in the sermon. It might be in the word of forgiveness. It might be in one line in a song. And you'll say, that's like, that song was like for me. And it will be God. Because he promises this. My word that goes out from my mouth will not return to be empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent. How do you stay out of the rut of worship, mindlessly going, zoning out between the start and the finish of worship? How do you get everything that God puts in for you in worship, by longing for worship, by seeking him, because he is here every time? By his power and by his presence and by his peace, he works in our lives. This week, uh, we have uh, several of our family members who are uh, going to see, on a trip, going to see the Grand Canyon. How many of you ever seen the Grand Canyon? How many of you ever been out there? Okay, How, okay, number of you, not all of you. How many of you ever took pictures when you were watch, uh, went to the Grand Canyon? How many of you took pictures? Yes, of course you did. And how many of you, when you showed those pictures to somebody else, said, the pictures just don't do it justice. You've got to be there. Is a picture of worship doesn't do you justice. Zoning out in worship, you're missing. You've got to be there in your spirit because God is here with his spirit. And in this hour, in your life, he intends good things. Are you hearing it? Are you seeing it? It's God. Would you stand with me, please? Come before God now to humble ourselves, to confess our sins, to take uh, all of the, all of the burden, all the guilt, all the shame, and and let Him have it. Let Him take care of it, and faithfully look to Him for deliverance. Lord, You have called us to worship You, and we gladly gather as we praise You. Though our own inadequacy reminds us of how we have broken our relationship with You. Because we have sinned against you, even our worship fails to be what it could. We often treat it as a show. We simply go through the motions, failing to recognize that you want to engage us deeply. Renew us, we pray, according to your steadfast love. Remind us of your covenant faithfulness and have mercy on us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. None of us are perfect people. We are not perfectly faithful. We are not perfect um, in our lives. We are not perfectly sincere when it comes to our relationship with God and even our worship here. But you would think that in our imperfection, God would say, oh, okay, maybe this one time I'll forgive you. Okay, maybe you can still come to worship. God invites us to be here. God wants us to be here. God wants to bless us. He wants to renew us, to forgive us, to strengthen us. And that's what he does by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us and to be raised again upon your confession and the faith that he has given you. You are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, as God's forgiven children, I invite you to be seated, first of all. As God's forgiven children, um, we have the privilege of, of coming before him into his presence and to share in the Lord's Supper, a gift that he has given us. And I invite you at this point to take the elements out of the bag as we move forward with communion. Now, before we begin our communion liturgy, as always, I'd like to remind all of us that, about what we believe at St. Matthew about communion and how we are to partake in this meal. And uh, as a church that belongs to uh, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, our greater denomination, we also uh, are uh, completely in agreement with uh, what we practice and believe. And it's uh, essentially this uh, communion is a gift given to us by God for our benefit, for our strengthening uh, as, a, uh, as a, something that he invites us to and desires for us. But God wants us to participate in it in the right way that is beneficial for us and honors him. And so we know from scripture that this is a meal for those who believe in Jesus Christ as their only savior. For those who have been instructed and taught in what this meal is and what it does, according to the beliefs of our church, and for those who come to the table 
um, of like mind and in fellowship, those who agree on what it is and what it does. And so if you should be unsure about what you believe about God or Jesus or anything like that, if you should uh, come from a different church background, or if you should have any outstanding conflict or differing beliefs, then we invite you lovingly to abstain from communion today, but to come talk to one of us pastors after the service, because uh, as we always say, this is not something that we try to withhold from people. We just want to make sure that we do it in a God-honoring way uh, and to instruct properly. Now, having said that, let's enjoy the Lord's Supper together. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup of wine, and after he blessed it, he gave it to them and said, drink of it, all of you. This is the new covenant, which is poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, taste and see that the Lord is good. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed in love for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. We ask you to please uh, close your containers, put them back in the bag, and either safely dispose of them at home or in the trash bin as you leave in the lobby today. Just don't leave them here. Now, this true body and true blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Go in peace. You are forgiven and free. Amen. I invite you to stand as we bring before God all of our needs in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you have strengthened us as your children, that you have forgiven us through your word and through this meal, through the work of Christ. Lord, keep us close to you. Strengthen us in love and faith toward you and love and service to our neighbor so that we may glorify you in everything we do and proclaim Christ with all of our lives. Lord, we give you thanks today as well um, that we can worship in person again. Lord, what an absolutely valuable gift and through which you work powerfully. Uh, Lord, we are not worthy of it, but we are thankful that we are recipients of it. We pray uh, Thanksgiving for the birth of uh, the Burns healthy grandson. Uh, we pray for uh, the baptism of Ava as well, Thanksgiving, and we pray for the upcoming wedding of Max and Sabrina as well. Lord, would you uh, bless all of them, and would you uh, not only create faith, but also strengthen it, uh, whether it's through uh, baptism, through marriage, uh, through all the ways in which you work, Lord. We pray for guidance and filling staff positions that are vacant here at St. Matthew, and we continue to pray, Lord, that your will be done as you appoint faithful workers uh, to send out into the harvest. We pray for those volunteering and participating in international ministry, Lord, that you would keep them safe, but that you would also equip them and guide them in their outreach efforts, Lord, so that people would know who you are and come to love you and depend on you and trust in you. Lord, we pray for persecuted Christians today as well, all around the world, but today specifically in the Sudan. Lord, keep them safe, give them shelter, have their neighbors show love and mercy and compassion to them. But Lord, uh, even in this challenging, trying time, most of all, help them to stay firm in their faith and for your name. We pray for Sylvia McGabe, one of our homebound members. Uh, Lord, would you bless her with your presence, with your love? Would you remind her that she is a beloved child of yours? And would you work through us as your children um, in prayer, in reading of scripture, in conversation, in any other way, Lord, that you reveal to us uh, to bless her and to keep her in the communion of the church? We pray for the advancement of your kingdom, Lord despite the pandemic. We pray for your word to go out powerfully, for your people uh, to serve faithfully, so that again, Lord, your name would be known and people would come to you in faith and receive salvation. We pray for Christians in India to be protected from uh, the current wave of, of COVID. And Lord, we pray also for uh, the financial uh, support that would be raised for the church planters in Kolkata as well. Help them to endure this season. Remind them that you are there faithfully to bring them through it, that you provide for them in every single way, Lord. But specifically, Lord, uh, would you grant this that we pray today? We pray for our government, for our country, and, and for our, our world today. Lord, be with 
not only the politicians as we usually pray, but with the people as well. Would you give a, us a peace that can only come from you? Would you work a, a harmony in this world uh, for the betterment of your people? And also again, to show your glory. We pray for all of those who work as uh, custodians today. We thank you so much for their work and we thank you for calling them to that work. Would you bless them and strengthen them in their work? Uh, would you give them endurance as they have served very faithfully in this year of uh, just excess hours and sterilization and everything else, Lord? And would you help us to appreciate them always? Lord, we lift up those who are sick, those who are hospitalized and suffering, including Lori Wanfer, Bill Wheeler, Paula Confaro, Adam Baines, we lift up Beth as well, and Raymond Brooks, Renee, and Pastor Paul's father. Lord, we also lift up all of those who are suffering from, struggling with, or recovering from COVID-19. Lord, uh, grant them healing. We know that you can. You are the God of miracles. You are the God of healing. And so we boldly pray that you would heal them, restore them in every way possible. But as hard as it is, Lord, we also pray that your will be done most of all. Lord, uh, we also want to pray for safe travel for the works to Arizona this week and guidance for someone with an important life transition decision coming up. Lord, be close to them. Give them assurance um, and let them know that you are near always. Lord, we lift up all of these prayers, all of these things that are on our hearts, all of the things that we don't know how to pray for, always, 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 in the name of our King Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to be seated. As we receive the offering, we have a few announcements for you. Uh, guests, as always, it's good to have you with us. If you have any questions about the ministry, about our faith, about uh, what we do here, you can always reach out at hello at st-matthew.org or talk to one of us pastors after the service. A second, in the pews in front of you, you see your, uh, you'll see communication cards. Go ahead and fill those out. Let us know that you're here. If you have any prayer requests or updated information or anything else that you'd like us to know as well. We want to thank you for your ongoing support of the ministry here at St. Matthew, uh, and you can give in multiple ways, whether that's here in person, physically, or online. If you're more interested in that, you can go to st-matthew.org slash give as well. Now, uh, here's a good question. Are you more interested in connecting with the family of God here at St. Matthew? If you are a visitor, if you've been attending for a long time, we know that we haven't had membership classes in quite a while due to the pandemic, but we are starting membership class back up for those who are seeking to be new members. And that will start uh, at 10 a.m. on Sunday, the 26th. So that's next week. And it'll be in room 301 of the Wald Lake campus. This will be eight consecutive weekly Sunday sessions uh, with the exception of October 3rd. And they'll provide an overview of the Christian faith leading to membership at St. Matthew. And uh, for those who are curious, childcare is provided during that time. As we mentioned before, uh, our new sermon series starts next week. It's called the Red Letter Challenge, and it's a 40-day discipleship sermon series. We have a workbook that accompanies it with daily devotions and reflections, everything like that. Small group Bible study, that's going to start next week as well. Now we have books, uh, the workbooks, and they are for free thanks to a generous member donation. All of the books, in a very good way, are gone. That's bad news for those who don't have books, but we have more books that are being ordered and they will be there Sunday, the 26th. If you want to be extra sure that you have a book, you can always purchase them at the Red Letter Challenge website as well. All of that information is on our website as you prepare your small group or uh, to order those books or get them as well. Then Christian Resources International is the mission of the month this month. Uh, CRI collects new and gently used Christian literature to ship overseas for native missionaries to teach God's word for those 
who desperately need the gospel. So please donate unused Bibles, study materials, inspirational books, children's Christian storybooks, and even more. And you can place the materials in the bins at each display in the lobby. So it'll be right out there for you. Um, and in addition, monetary funds, if you are interested, uh, may be directly sent to CRI to support shipping costs as well. And that information is on the displays in the lobby as well. Then finally, we want to remind you that Sunday morning classes are beginning again, whether that's adult Bible study, children's ministry, youth, uh, that's all at 10 a.m. Now, here's a note. Uh, some of you, many of you actually, came to adult Bible study last week, and we overfilled room 305. There were too many people for that room. Here's the good news. We are moving location. We will be in the chair section of the sanctuary this week. We'll have tables set up, chairs around it. So go get your coffee or donuts and then come right back here afterwards. We will have plenty of room for everybody. Those are all the announcements that we have. Uh, and I promise they will go down as we kind of ramp down from the fall with everything starting up. Um, but having said that, let's receive our offering um, and uh, give back to God the first fruits of what he's given us. Before I leave you with a blessing, I'd like to give you two uh, challenges this week. Uh, we have a lot of people who are coming to worship more recently now that we've opened everything back up and we have the new worship schedule. You might see some faces that, of people that you've maybe never met before. And these are your brothers and sisters in Christ. So as you leave worship today, as you're in the lobby getting coffee and donuts, uh, find one person that you may have seen before, but maybe you don't know them, or maybe somebody you've never even seen before and say, hey, I don't think we've met yet introduce yourself. Um, 
We want to make sure that we have good community here and are welcoming to everybody as well. And then second, it is very important and very effective uh, for all of us to personally invite people into worship with God. Maybe you have a friend, a relative, somebody you know who used to attend. Try to invite one person to worship uh, so that they can share and receive in God's blessing as well. Those are my two challenges for you. Let me know next week how it went. I invite you to stand. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no evil for evil. Help the suffering. Honor all. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. With God's help, we will. And the blessing of the Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.